I'm Luke Beard. I'm Chris Green. I'm Riley Gunter. And I'm Nash Rooney. And we are the backups. Yeah, so we have to uh, have to go with the show without Nash today. Sadly, he's on a trip overseas. Miss you, Nash. He should be back by next week. So we're we're praying he gets back safely. Uh, let's start off with the Masters, though. John Rahm wins the second major. Uh, his other major being the 2021 U.S. Open. John Rahm had a fantastic tournament. Shot 12 under in the tournament. Uh, that third day, there were a lot of delays and whatnot. Got cut short. Had to finish it Sunday, so he shot one over that day. But every other round, he shot under par, and he was very consistent throughout the tournament. What do you have to say about it? Uh, I'm I'm not the biggest golf fan, but I I will say like I've heard his name pretty much all weekend. He pretty much took over. And clearly, it was round one was was his best, where he shot 65. So that really pushed him through the end of the weekend. But still. A good round two and a good round four definitely helped put him in that leader spot. He also got helped a lot by uh, Kepka, you know, falling off, yeah. kind of folded. He had a really good first two rounds. The second two rounds shot over on both of them, three over in the uh, fourth day. You just you can't do that to win a tournament. You can't play bad on your final round or just shoot over par in these kind of tournaments because these are big deals. These are major uh, championships you're yeah. going for here. Yeah. And guys like uh, Jordan Spieth, had a great round four, but he can't seem to get it together when it comes to Saturday. Yeah, Saturday play. He just very inconsistent within his tournaments. Those first two days he plays well, always making cuts and whatnot. Saturday comes around, he completely folds, and then Sunday comes back, and he decides he wants to play again. And it's just too much inconsistency for him to win all, a lot of championships yeah. nowadays. And Phil Mickelson also was one who I did not expect to be where he was at the end of the tournament. Um, he had a I'd say a decent round one shooting one under, but then round three has really messed him up when he had shot three over, but still amazing round four. Seven under on round four yeah. to that, finish eight under tie for seven. That pretty much put him in that second place. Exactly. A lot of live golfers up in that top five, too. Yeah. I believe three of the five, or three of, because there was multiple people tied for fourth. So yeah. I want to say, let's see, three of six in that top four area were live with Patrick Reed. Uh, Phil and Brooks Kepka being in there. Really wanted to see a live guy win it. Thought it'd be interesting to see a live guy win the major, but yeah. clearly didn't happen with Kepka. I've seen a lot of PGA what? fans on TikTok are very happy that yeah. Kepka oh, I'm sure. um, fumbled. They're like, oh, this is, this is why you got to stick PGA. Mm -hmm. No, like, I'm sure they're happy. Money, but... money can't buy the Masters and stuff like that. But they are good showing for the live tournament still. Yeah, These guys good. still clearly have what it takes. And then Tiger Woods tied the most cuts in a row at the Masters with 23 straight, missing a couple years due to his, you know, his injuries and everything just going on in his life. But Tiger, I don't know if he has what it takes to win another major. But he's still a good golfer. Same he golf. can still golf. He's, you know, he's older. He barely made the cut. Yeah. He was right on the edge of it. But still making the cut at the Masters is impressive. He... Uh, was it? Yes, plantar fasciitis. So he had to pull out of it. Yeah. However, still impressive to see him making 23 straight. Hopefully, he can get one more, break the record. Well, I believe on his last day, he shot six over. You could look at it and be like, ah, he's not golfing good. But at the same time, he's making cuts. He'd beat you any day, any time. Oh like, man, it's, Tiger Woods. Also, acknowledge the fact that he's playing golf with one leg, pretty much. Yeah. 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 I mean, he's just. Tiger is one of the greatest athletes of all time. Yeah. One of the most prolific names in the sport of golf. And he's still doing what he's been known to do, which is, you know, make cuts, yeah. still be a factor in tournaments. He's not a huge factor, albeit, but still a factor. Yeah. Let's move on to the NBA playoffs. We have the play-in games coming up. We have the Raptors, Bulls, and then who else is playing? The, the Wolves, yeah. Lakers, yeah. Heat, Hawks, and Pelicans, Thunder. What do you see coming out, Chris? Uh, so for the Heat and Hawks, I assume that the Heat will – when I assume that playoff Jimmy Butler is going to come in. I and, think they'll win that game. Yeah, too. yeah, so. and the Lakers and Timberwolves. I think even even with Rudy Gobert, I think the Lakers are just a better overall squad than the Timberwolves. Mm -hmm. but the Timberwolves have been playing great as of late. Mm -hmm. And with the Pelicans and Thunder, I do believe that the Pelicans will come out, but you can never count, count out SGA. No, I think the Thunder team is kind of sneaky. Yeah, I think they could they could make it into the playoffs. Kind of sneakily, especially with Pelicans not having Zion, I believe. Yeah, so it's unfortunate to see that we won't get to see Zion in the playoffs. Yeah, it's yeah, but the Pelicans, 
Still a very good team. Yeah, I have a ton of players on there that yeah, they mesh really well together. But yeah. the Thunder are a young team, really bright future from them. And then Bulls or Raptors, I'm assuming that you're I'm, I'm taking the Raptors, of course, from a Raptors fan, but it, but I'm just going to say that this is going to be one of the worst basketball games that you ever see on that national TV. It's, it's not going to be good basketball, but I'm taking the Raptors. Who do you think takes the eighth seed for conferences? I think the Hawks will take that eighth seed. You think they'll end up beating the Raptors? Yeah. I think the Bulls will take the eighth seed, honestly. I just, I, the Hawks, I, I don't see, know. I, I can just, see that, but it's just like, you know, it's, it's April. You know that, right? Yeah, you, I know. You know it's April. So. I know it's the Bulls in April. It's, yeah, and it, you yeah. know, a certain player, number 10, you know how he get in April. I know, but just I think something can happen. DeMar might, you know, he might, start playing. Yeah, he might turn around. I thought, I thought he was going to do the same thing last year, and he tricked me. And I just, he has a chance. Yeah. He has we'll, a chance. We'll see. And then the eighth seed, I think, will probably – Go to the Pelicans. In the West, yeah. I think I, so, I especially that. Gobert out right now. Not sure if he'll be back if they end up losing to the Lakers. It's just for one game, so. It, it is yeah. just one game? Yeah, okay, yeah, so, so yeah, he'll, he'll be, be back, back then. Yeah. But I still just think the Pelicans have too much offensive firepower yeah. on them to go out. And then we have Clippers-Suns. That's a fun matchup. That should be a good We game. have, you know, KD versus Russ, uh, Booker, uh, Paul George, Chris Paul Kawhi, a bunch of different factors in here. Well, and, yeah, sorry to interrupt, but the – Thing thing about what well, with the Clippers, they're missing Paul George for this series. Oh, they are. Yeah, they are missing Paul. I know George they're missing. Series. Well, that so, yeah, that hurts that's, them that's, a lot. Yeah, that's a big that loss. Hurts them a lot. The Clippers are a good squad, but I, I just don't think they have, they need really need Paul George to be this. Yeah, team. I think missing Paul George. I'm not yeah. saying that that definitely makes me kind of rethink of how yeah. it's going to go. Yeah, Suns might sweep them. I I, I think it was, in I think it was six games. Six. Look, I, playoff Kawhi. Yeah, playoff I, Kawhi I, I, is a fantastic yeah. player. You also have the Suns with motivated by Chris Paul. You know, wanting to be back in the back in the championship. Yeah. He's addicted to playing. He's addicted. I know to Chris you to said he's finals. two years sober, but yeah. I think he's the year where he breaks sobriety. Yeah. Nah. 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 <laughs> this is not the year he breaks sobriety. Nah. It's never gonna happen. <laughs> it's never happening. Hey, one day. It won't be. Probably not, day. but maybe. <laughs> No, it's more than likely it's going to be one of the teams up towards the top making it out, possibly yeah. the Nuggets. Or maybe even one of the lower seeds. Maybe a, a, two, both of the teams in, in California, maybe, maybe the Lakers. The Lakers aren't making it. Maybe the Nuggets they, might make it, though. I yeah. think the Nuggets have a, I don't, I have a chance. I, I think Jokic is going to go on a little tear in the playoffs. He's going when, to be. When, when has he ever done that? I think he's going to. Oh, he's going to play happen. exceptionally in the playoffs, I believe. Kind of prove why, you know, why he's a two-time MVP, why he's. So highly ranked by so many people as a player, I think he uh-huh. might go on a tear. So when they have to play the Suns and, and, and he got he got to switch on KD, what, then what are you gonna do? They'll figure something out. Yeah, they're not gonna. They'll put someone on KD. Yeah, he's gonna not gonna be on KD. Yeah, he, it's gonna be a point he's gonna he's switch too, on KD. He might, but he's too big to actually play on KD. Yeah. Someone will guard KD well enough to possibly make a difference. But DeAndre Ayton is not stopping Jokic. No, I, I, I don't disagree. So I think all. Jokic is going to go for like 40, 45 each game against the Suns. Yeah, but that's not going to – hey, basketball, team game. That's true. Team game. You can't win that's by true. yourself. And who's two seed in the West? The Grizzlies. Grizzlies? Yeah, never mind. I don't, yeah, they won't I make don't, it. That's why I say I, it's yeah, be a lower Yeah, the season. Lakers will probably end up Beating taking them. them very quickly. So I just – I'm not a huge fan of the Grizzlies team. Yeah. I don't think they're built well. Riley, I know you have some – Familial ties with this Kings Warriors matchup. What do you see? Uh, it's kind of kind of sad because I didn't want both teams to end up playing each other. But I got to take the Warriors. Yeah, the Warriors. Give me that one. You have the third Splash brother, Jordan Poole, who's well, he's decent in the playoffs. You know, he has that circle. Plays really good one game, media praises him. Plays bad, media criticizes him. The circle of Jordan Poole. And also, I think that's probably a matchup that the Kings wanted to avoid this this year. Yeah, they and then. To avoid a lot of teams want it because the Kings is a very young team. Shake your head like Warriors and, and sweep the season series with them, man. Kings are about to light the beam. Yeah, we'll They're see. They're about to, about to sweep the Warriors in the playoffs. <laughs> I don't know about that. No, I don't know if they'll beat them, but I do like the Kings. Yeah, I do they're like they're also a really young team, really exciting team to watch. I'm glad they're finally back in the playoffs. I think Darren Fox is one of the most underrated players in all of basketball. Yeah, yeah. And then Sabonis, also a very good player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll probably have Draymond guarding him, but... We'll see how that works. I think Fox will probably go off. Though. It's just, it's really sad that a first round exit, well, I thought it started with F, but it's actually going to start with a K being the Kings. So it's sad to see. This guy. This guy. Man. This guy. <laughs> now, and then Clay Thompson also having one of his best yeah. seasons. I think it's his third highest scoring season. And that's, you know, coming off of those, all those injuries oh, he had. Yeah. 
he's back to playing like Clay. He had his most three pointers ever made in the season. Uh, Jordan Poole, Curry, and Clay had the most three pointers made by a trio in the season, which is a ridiculous statistic. But still, they did have that. You know, Curry is the greatest were, shooter of all put time. Up Fifty-five Clay points. Top five shooter. Put up fifty-five points in the first quarter. Most by that, yeah, 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 that's, that's true. Consider Wiggins is coming back soon too for this series. That is true. Wiggins coming back, which is good because they need Wiggins. Yeah, they need. I think him. Wiggins is a I think he's a huge play player for them. Yeah, because he's. He's really started to grow into that prospect everyone saw him being. Yeah. I mean, he's not the next LeBron, but But he is Jason Tatum's nightmare, though. That's true. Yeah. That is true. Tatum can't seem to get, it, get away from him. Yeah. And then we have Knicks, Cavs. I'm excited for this. This is going to be a fun season. I think the Cavs have really good, just a whole good group. They have two really good bigs, Mobley and uh, Jared Allen. And then they have, you know, Darius Garland, Donovan Mitchell. Yeah, in the backcourt. They're a strong team. They are a very strong team. I don't think the Knicks will be able to handle them. But they do match up really well with this. They game. do, because Julius Randle. Yeah. Good big. And, and then quickly you have. Yeah, to, quickly. What, depending on what day it is, RJ Barrett. Yeah. If RJ Barrett wants to play good, then yeah. RJ Barrett. But uh quickly, very good young guard. He has really grown to his own and on the Knicks. Because you don't really see players going into their own in New York anymore, but yeah. Randall, Barrett, and Quickly have all kind of Oh yeah. I, I cannot forget Jalen Brunson. Oh, yeah, fantastic no, season. completely forgot Brunson. Jalen Brunson's a fantastic player. You see how different this Mavericks team is without him. Yeah. They aren't even the playoffs after going to the finals, like or the Western Luka, Conference Finals. Like, like even Luka was saying, yeah, I miss him a lot. Yeah, Jalen Brunson's a fantastic player who will cause problems on both ends of the court yeah. for the uh, the Cavs' backcourt, who are a strong backcourt. I feel like they have a lot of scoring options on the Cavs, too. They can really score from anywhere, you know, Allen inside, Mobley even inside. And then uh, Mitchell, great slasher. Yeah. Garland can shoot. They are everywhere, though. Very strong team. And we have Sixers, Nets. Not as exciting as it could have been earlier in the season yeah. with, you know, Katie and Kyrie on the Nets. Them being gone, it's not as exciting to me, but I like the new look Nets. Yeah. I, I think I, they're yeah, very good. I, I'm really enjoying what, what Mikhail Bridges has been doing doing down there. Him and, him and Cam and Spencer Dinwiddie from – yeah, if Cam actually gets games, minutes, yeah. he puts up like yeah. 45 a game. Yeah, yeah, Cam Thomas, but yeah. he probably won't get any playoff minutes, but it would be nah. fine for him, though. He plays no defense, but he plays great offense. Great offense, yeah. Very good score. If he can pick up on the defensive end next year, he'll be a problem. He might be an all-star if he can pick up on defense next year and actually get minutes. But the Sixers, I just don't see them losing. Yeah. Joel Embiid is possibly the best player in the NBA. James Harden's a great player, likely to make an all-NBA team. Yeah, the yeah, Sixers are obviously, I, I do obviously think they're going to win this series, but, you know, like every year, annual second round exit. Yeah, that's true. Right. That's true, and then we'll see who uh, Boston and Milwaukee end up playing, but I think those are still the two strongest teams yeah. in the East. I don't see anyone really beating Boston or Milwaukee till they face off. I hope Boston makes it to the finals. I think Boston will make it to the finals. I'm taking the Bucks in this. I think Jason Tatum, he's a good playoff player. And I think he'll go on a little playoff tear. Jalen Brown, same way, will go on a tear. Uh, Horford, back yeah. of Boston, is huge for the Celtics because Horford has come up in just big moments for Boston. Yeah. Rob Williams. Rob Williams, great defender. Not great on offense, great defender. Uh, we saw Peyton Pritchard in game 82 go off for a 30-point triple-double. He's a really good player. Yeah. Peyton Pritchard's a very good player who, if given good minutes, will do a lot for your team. And who was it that scored 26 on the Raptors a couple of days ago? Oh, oh, um, oh, we just got him from Thunder. Like Sam. Sam Hauser. Yeah, Sam Hauser. Sam yeah. Hauser, yeah. Dropped 26 on the Raptors, owns the Raptors, as yeah. most Boston players do. Yeah. <laughs> and then Marcus Smart. Yeah. He, I didn't even mention Marcus Smart. Great player. Malcolm Brogdon as well. Malcolm, Malcolm Brogdon has really helped out the Celtics yeah. to me. And that's I think he's a very good player who does a lot for Boston. He scores. He plays defense. He kind of picks up for what Marcus Smart doesn't do on the scoring end. Even, and Marcus Smart can score, yeah. but he's a defender. And I think if they choose a good starting five, Boston, they could win the finals. Yeah, season. and of, of course we just need Jason Tatum to actually – Play good in the finals this yep. year. And Marcus Smart, stop making it about you and just pass the ball sometimes. Yeah, Marcus Smart, not known for his passing. Yeah, stop. Known for You're not the main character. Chucking up threes. Yeah. Brent Williams, another guy who yeah. I believe for that. Very strong player. But on the Bucks end, they have, you know, Drew Holiday. To me, 
he's one of my favorite players in the league. Yeah. He's probably the not, he might be the best defensive guard. I think he's one of the best defensive guards, top three, and he's a very good offensive player. Yeah. Chris Middleton, though, I'm just not sure if he can play in the playoffs right yeah. now because he's been, you know, been very on and off. On and he's on been injured. Defense, he's yeah. been, you know, everywhere. So that's why I think Boston could take Milwaukee in a game or in a series. But, you know, Giannis is you Giannis. Got, got, He'll drop gotta, 50 a game. You also got to consider Bobby, Bobby Portis, too. Bobby Portis, yeah. Bobby Portis is a good player. Brooke Lopez is still on the, yeah. or on the Bucks. Bucks yeah. And Brooke Lopez, you know, he learned how to shoot. Splash Mountain. Good shooter, good defender. The Bucks do have it all. Yeah. They have good coaching. They have good de- – probably, probably the best defense in the league yeah. when they're playing at their peak. And then they can score at will because Giannis yeah. will drop 50 every game if he has to. Drew Holiday can give you 30, 40, 50, whatever you – maybe not 50. 30 or 40 if you ask it of him. Chris Middleton will consistently drop 25 for you. And then, you know, Lopez and Portis are just sitting there off the boards and getting rebounds, passing it. Ready, re- ready to score ready if they to have to. Yeah. The, very strong teams there. I think the East – Whoever comes out of the East will win the finals this yeah, season. I, I just don't see a team in the West strong enough to take to stop it. Him, yeah. I think the East is probably the, the strong. They've been the strongest division for maybe two or three years now. You know, the West had a tear where, like a 10-year tear, where they were just strong and nobody could stop them. Yeah. But now it's back to the East when it was, you know, it's back to how it was in the late, late 2000s yeah. era. Or it was like early 90s. Yeah, early 90s, the 90s, 2000s, where the East kind of dominated basketball. Yeah. And I think it's back to that because I could see three or four teams coming out of the East. I don't know about y'all. I could see Boston. I could see uh, Milwaukee. I could see the Sixers. I think the Sixers are strong. I could see the Cavs coming out. Uh, that's, I'm, I'm worried about the ca- Cavs because, like, they're really good, but I think they need another year before they actually. They are a little inexperienced. Yeah. I would agree. They're kind of like the Kings. Yeah. They're the Kings of the East. I think they're two unexperienced teams that have a lot of potential and have a lot of like firepower, where they will score. Yeah. And they will play defense, but can they put it together for seven games? Yeah. And it's the adjustments you have to make in these kind of uh, series. It's, you know, they'll adjust to the Knicks. Yeah. Because they match up with them perfectly. They'll be able to play the next. Yeah, but when they have to match up with the Bucks in yeah. the next round, it's just gonna, it's Yeah, I mean, Mobley will do his best. Yeah. Allen will do his best, but there's no you stopping can't, Giannis. You can't in the stop the Greek freak. No, he's, he's, not stopping. he's to me the best player in basketball. Yeah, he has been I the agree. best player in basketball for about five years now. Him, uh, KD's on that caliber, Embiid, yeah. and Jokic. Cur- Curry's been phenomenal for the past however many seasons. It is sad to see Damian Lowe and I able to make the playoffs this year. Yeah. And guys like Luca, who I thought kind of deserved it, but they just couldn't get it done. Yeah. And if you can't get it done, you're not going to make it. Oh. And now you have the um, you have the Mavericks getting looked into for... For possibly tanking. Like, yeah. Which is crazy considering his teams like the Houston Rockets and, yeah. and Detroit Pistons. Mm-hmm. They're just money laundering schemes right there, but you don't want to go look at them, but you want to look at the Mavericks to make the playoffs. Exactly. And then it's like... Even the Spurs, our team, I don't, they might have tanked. But if you, uh, they definitely tanked. this Spurs team, if they get Victor Wimbanyama and you match up Greg Popovich and Wimbanyama, you don't want to see them. Yeah, you don't want to see Next them. season, if the Spurs somehow come out with Wimbanyama, it's over. Honestly, another team I would like to see them at is maybe with the Pistons or maybe even Indiana. I, I, I wouldn't mind them. With the Indiana, are, they're a growing team. They have a lot of good players. Yeah, so I, Miles I, would, Turner. I would love to see him against Ty Halliburton. Ty Halliburton, Buddy Hill, Miles Turner, and Wynn Minyama would be pretty impressive. And Mathurin, too. Yeah. yeah, I forgot about Benedict yeah. Mathurin. He's a very good player. But And the Pistons, I just, I, they won't make him his full potential. So I don't want to see him I in think the they will. I, I mean, you got, you got K, uh, Jay and Ivy. I mean, uh, I guess. They just, they, they just I, don't I, seem to. I like, I like what they got over there. They got a. They have a good team. Yeah, they have a nice young. They just don't ever seem to win. They just, I don't they just know. Need, it, they're missing the coaching. Yeah, yeah that's they just true. Need the coaching. They're they're one of those franchises that have what it takes to be decent. They just yeah. can never put it together. They just need the coaching. Even when Drummond was there forever ago, they had what it took to be decent. They just yeah, but it, it, but it's only so much that somebody like Drummond can do. That's true. Yeah, that is true. All right, let's move on to Odell. He just got signed to the Ravens. Fifteen million dollars guaranteed. Eighteen million dollars is the I guess the cap for the deal. 
That's ridiculous to me. I'm thinking Lamar has to be staying yeah, then. There's no, there's no way no Odell way. would have signed to the Ravens if Lamar was if Lamar was going to go to another team. You would you would think Lamar staying. Why would they not just give that money to him? Yeah, like, give him I, something. So so let me get this straight. You got 18 million for Odell for, Beckham. For Odell Beckham, but you the guy coming it. off an ACL tear who has not played football since 2000 February of 2022. Exactly. He, Lamar Jackson, your MVP quarterback, franchise quarterback, best quarterback you ever had. Since I don't know, since like Joe Flacco, and you don't want to pay him. He's more talented than Joe Flacco. Yeah, I'll give him that. Joe Flacco is able to win rings, but you also have to look at who was around Flacco. Lamar's playing with Mark Andrews, and then who? Rashad Bateman, I guess. Djax. Yeah, but like, how do you not pay Lamar at this yeah. point? You just want him gone. That's what it feels like, because they just want him gone, but they won't get let him go. It's like you're going back to your ex. You don't want to be with her anymore, but you do. <laughs> it's, it's just the same cycle with Lamar. They need to pay him, but they won't. They it's don't put the effort. Why would, Od- why would Odell go if Lamar isn't staying? Like, if I was Lamar, I'd want to leave the Ravens. He's making $15 million well, yeah, he's guaranteed. He's making $15 million, but I would think he'd want a good quarterback as well. Yeah. He's making $15 million. We're, we're not realizing this is a guy coming off an ACL tear who hasn't played his best football in That's six true, years. That's true, but... Odell. If you're getting $15 million guaranteed, you're taking it. But that's true, but Odell is a, is a win-now type wide receiver. Like, he already won. But he want, he want to win another one, he want, and he want to play with a, with a... No, he wants $15 million. I was getting $15 million. I'm like, sorry. Oh, we lost the game. I'm still getting Yeah, I'm still getting million million dollars, though. a million dollars a game. That's insane for Odell, yeah. who I, I'm high on Odell. I, I'm a I huge Odell, Odell Beckham Jr. One, fan. One of my favorite players ever. Exactly, but that's a lot of money for him right now. Yeah. I think, I thought he was going to get a prove it contract from someone, and this is not a prove it contract. Yeah, this this nice. is a superstar getting paid superstar money. I just don't know if he has the superstar potential that he had at one point. That's a lot of money. Yeah. Right, and while we're talking football, I do want to bring up real quick Jeff Akuda to the Falcons for a fifth round. Uh, Akuda, former number three overall pick. I like Jeff Akuda. I think he's a good player. He did not play great in Detroit. But he showed flashes. Too. He showed flashes where he could be great. And him being matched up with, you know, A.J. Terrell and Jesse, Jesse Bates, Bates, I think the Falcons are starting to realize that they need to bow up on their secondary. And they are building on, you know, something that has potential. It's, but back to Odell, that's just so much money. Yeah. Up to $18 million, $15 million guaranteed when you can't give your quarterback a guaranteed contract. I, I, he wants more than Deshaun Watson, who played horribly last. Yeah. That's all he wants. He wants what Deshaun was making, just a little more than him. And he deserves that. He, right now, is a better quarterback than Deshaun Watson. But that, the, the moves that the Ravens have made are just ridiculous. Yeah, like, they've done nothing to help him no. since he's gotten there. Like, no. They're just not making moves that they want to win. They're just, yeah. you know, spending money on players. On defense. Them. You have, you've been a defensive team for 20, like 25 years. Get him one yeah. receiver Get besides him one receiver, Odell. Man. Or just pay him what he wants. Yeah, y'all couldn't go after D Hop or something? Because like, what happens with next year when Lamar's is going to leave? He's going to leave at some point. Yeah. Yeah. If he's not getting the help or if he's not getting the money he wants, what happens? Who do you go to at that point? You have Tyler Huntley? That's it? I mean, Tyler Huntley's a Pro Bowl quarterback uh, being like the fourth option into the Pro Bowl. But Lamar is an MVP, a consistent player who is. Probably a top five quarterback in the league, if yeah. not, you know, top seven, top five area. How do you not give him a contract? Because once these guys like Burrow are getting paid, and these, you know, other young yeah. quarterbacks, all Lamar's just gonna want more money. Yeah. Because Burrow's about to sign a huge contract whenever he has the opportunity. Lamar will want that kind of money because Burrow is not an MVP. Yeah. He's a Super Bowl quarterback who should be a Super Bowl champion at this point. But Lamar will use the excuse or the argument that. You know, Burrow didn't win the MVP like he did. And maybe the Ravens will argue back, well, you don't have the playoff success. That's because you haven't built anything around yeah. him. Of course you don't have the playoff success. Lamar Jackson deserves the truckload of money he wants, and he's not getting it. It's just ridiculous to me that you're able to splurge on Odell, but you can't but get you the money. you can't pay your quarterback. And now, you know, Rodgers to the Jets, which is still, it's going to happen yeah. at some point. But... 
Odell was on his wish list. I don't think yeah. he's mad about it, really. You know, he still has great receivers there. Alan Lazard is fine. Yeah. And then you have you Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson. Elijah Moore. Yeah. Elijah Moore is a great player. Jeff Okuda. Uh, I said Jeff Okuda. Uh, Tyler Ozuma. Yeah, Tyler Ozuma. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, the running back game is still. Yeah, so Brees Hall. Brees Hall, uh, just coming off an injury, but he'll be good. But I just can't fathom $15 million to Odell at this point in his career. Let's move on to UFC 287. Chris, you're our resident MMA expert. What do you have to say about it? Um, I just want to apologize to Adesanya. Like, I, I said he was going to lose, but I wasn't. I don't think I was. I think my my. Feel pick, wrong. Yeah, I was wrong. But wrong. I think I think my pick was valid. Like you just lost to you lost to him three times. So, what? I, so I was just like, okay, I, I don't think he's gonna. Four do times it, is a lot of times to lose to a guy. Yeah. Um. He got one. He, yeah, he one finally three. got one. People I'm, are acting like he won the whole thing. Out. Yeah, I'm, he's I'm, won I'm, once. I'm glad he won. But, I mean, Pereira will probably go up to 205. I, I hope so. So we won't see that match anymore. But I'm Sonya just you know. I didn't expect him to knock him out. Like a great that. win too. Like he, yeah. I, I thought it was over because his his legs were pretty much gone. So mm-hmm. I, I was like, oh man, it's about to be over. Then he yeah. caught him. And I was like, oh. And then yeah. it was over. Next, yeah, next season on the other end, and yeah. probably one of my favorite UFC celebrations ever. After yeah. at the three arrows, and then <laughs> any emotes on on the son, son yeah. Pereira's yeah. kid who you know made fun of him made after fun that of him. that first kickboxing match, I believe. Yeah, the second one. Oh, the second one. Yeah. Okay, but you know. It was just funny to see. And then Masvidal retiring, retiring in Miami. Of course he wants to retire in Miami. Then he starts a let's go Brandon uh, let's go Brandon chant after his retirement speech, which was a little weird. Yeah, yeah that, was, that was a moment when I was, me and Chris were watching it. I like mm. looked up from my phone. I'm like, I thought we were watching UFC. Not, yeah. not some rally. I was like, what's yeah, going on? You know, Masvidal is just doing what Masvidal does. He talks. Yeah, Masvidal. Yeah. But he's lost to Gilbert Bun- Burns, who is clearly a superior fighter than Masvidal. Yeah. I thought it was clear going into it that yeah, Burns like when I saw When I saw that made that match, I was like, is... Gilbert Burns is a really good yeah, fighter. Yeah. Very good fighter. Masvidal was a good street fighter. Yeah. I yeah. don't think he was great he's in the not, UFC. He's not champion material. No. Yeah. Masvidal was Kimbo Slice. Yeah. Very good street fighters, huge names for the sport, weren't amazing in the UFC. It's just, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I just don't think Masvidal, he's done... He'll be back. They'll give him the money. That he'll last. If the him. money's right, yeah, he'll yeah, he'll it. come back for money. Dana White loves him. Masvidal, all it feels like. Yeah. He'll pay. I don't know why, but yeah. And then you saw uh, octagon side, ring side, I guess. Trump, Kid Rock, Mike Tyson, and Dana White, the big four. I thought that was pretty funny. That's funny. Yeah, you know, Trump, sure. who's right now being looked into for whatever it a is. A whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, I don't want to get into that. It's just whatever. And then. Kid Rock, probably his biggest supporter. And then Mike Tyson was, I was like, what is happening at this point? Kid Rock and Mike Tyson being seated next to each other made me laugh. Yeah, that was hilarious. And the pictures were funny. Yeah. Dana White and Trump make sense. Because they're actually good friends. Yeah, so yeah, I could see them being friends. And Kid Rock, huge Trump supporter. But what did make Tyson. sense to me was Gideon taking pictures with them. Yeah, Gideon and uh, Aiden Ross, I believe. Steve will do it. Is that the guy from Milk? I believe so. Yeah. I think he was there too, and they were all taking pictures. Jadion's just messing with Trump. It was, it was funny to see, you know, all these celebrities in one area just being celebrities. Yeah. The UFC seems to always bring out some weird combinations of people. Though. We got the WNBA draft. Saw a little bit of it. Uh, Leah Boston to the Indiana, Indiana Fever number one just made sense. Yeah. She'll dominate the WNBA for however long if she can get a it's shot okay. down. Clark come in there and take the throw. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just Leah Boston can't shoot. I mean, I seen her play in real life a couple times. She just doesn't have a jump shot. She's big. She can she can score, but she just moves great, people great, around. Great post score. I don't know if she'll be able to move people around like that in WNBA though, because those there's some strong women yeah. in that league. You know, Brittany Griner even very strong woman, very capable to stop people. She's a good yeah. defender. And then just you know, Candace Parker, yeah. another very strong defender. Asia Wilson. Yeah, Asia Wilson who coming out of Alina Carolina Del as well. Don. What was that? Alina Del Don. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And then Haley Jones from Sanford to the Atlanta Dream, yeah. number six. Look forward to going to the Atlanta Dream and getting a Haley Jones jersey. Mm-hmm. Haley Jones is a very good player. Yeah, very good. Very good player. And she did a lot for that Stanford team. Yeah. So it was good to see her go into the Dream. I think she'll be pretty good. She's close to us. We could maybe go and watch a Dream game. Yeah, yeah. See how it is. 
And then uh, the three South Carolina players did go in the top ten, which wasn't shocking. Aaliyah yeah. Boston, Letitia, I believe it's Amir, and Zaya Cook. Zaya Cook, I believe, is a very good player. Very good, yeah. And same with Letitia. But, you know, three Carolina players, it just makes sense. Yeah, I mean. You knew it was going to be like When that. you think of women's college basketball, you think South Carolina. South Carolina. They're just, they're just, and always, they're just always, yeah, they're just always the, yeah. the team that's up there. They're consistently going to just beat down yeah. on whoever. So, it's going to, you know, it's going to change up what's going on in the WNBA. I think that Indiana Fever with Boston will be a problem now. Yeah. Uh, Atlanta Dream will also be a problem because they got one of the South Carolina girls. I'm not positive if it was Letitia or Zai Cook, but I know they got one of them. Yeah. As well as Haley Jones. So, those are two good, you know, young players. Uh, you want to get into overtime, Chris? What do you want to start with? Uh, the Bruins, let's get into some hockey. The Bruins have set the record for the most regular season wins. You know, as much as I don't like the Bruins, if it was going to be any team to do that, it would be the Bruins. So congratulations to the Bruins. It's 63, right? 63 wins. Yep. I look forward to seeing y'all get losing the Stanley Cup this year. But 63 is very impressive yeah. for a hockey team. Because yeah. hockey is it's one of those more in, unpredictable what's going to actually happen. Because hockey feels like an any given Sunday kind of game. Yeah. Playoff yeah. hockey is some of the best. One of the, best one of the most teams. exciting playoff experiences you can watch. Yeah. Definitely. Riley, I know you're really excited for yours. Uh, you know, I'm bringing it back. It's been a few weeks, but Pac-12 hate is back. Is it Green Arrow? No, it's Bo Nix and some green organ suit. The Pac-12 is currently looking for a new um, channel or a station for media rights, and they've gone to the CW, which the CW is known for making comic books into live-action TV shows. I believe the Live Golf Tour is also is on Is it on there? CW. Well, I okay. So. But, but it's not like it. You're it doesn't make CW. sense to me. Uh, I don't think anyone would tune into CW to watch Pac-12 sports at 12 o'clock at midnight. I know we will. Yeah, yeah we I always mean, do. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be crazy seeing Bo Nix throw a deep pass to Spencer James. It, it's gonna be crazy. And the flash run across the screen as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely gonna be an interesting, you know, interesting yeah. concept when Gorilla God comes out and you know <laughs> sacks Bo Nix and yeah, what a. Gonna be like what the, a deal! Gonna be like the Nickelodeon NFL game. Yeah, Just exactly. That's exactly what it's gonna be. But the Pac-12 is kind of—they're getting some players in there, you know. DJU. Yeah. Possibly the greatest Clemson future quarterback number, of all time. Future number one overall pick. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Oregon State quarterback now. He's gonna be in Santa Oregon State. I'm calling his, it now. His little brother's gonna be pretty good. Yeah. That's a big boy. Yeah. That's a big five-star staying in the Pac-12, playing D-line. He's gonna sack his brother three times in that game at least. Oregon's going to be dominant, though, in yeah. Pac-12. Yeah. And Colorado won't be any good, but yeah. we'll see. If I mean, Colorado, get, yeah, yeah. Colorado, if they get anything over five wins, that's Yeah, it's impressive right. for yeah. them. I mean, I think Deontay, I think Coach Prime's a good coach. Yeah. And I think Shador's a good player. I think Colorado's just Travis Hunter way overhyped, still, though. I still think Travis Hunter's probably one of the best players in college. Yeah, I, I, think so, he'll, I think Coach Prime will bring the, the best out of all his players, yeah. though. It's going to take a couple yeah. years yeah. to rebuild there, yeah. though, and yeah. I think he knows that. Yeah. And, it, you know, it should. But I'm going to take over Nash's real quick. He, uh, he sent me a text last night. I asked him what he wanted his uh, overtime to be. He said WrestleMania backlash. He's, he's really into wrestling nowadays. Yeah. It's exciting to see. I'm sure if he was in here, he'd be like, you know, you got Cody Rhodes, you got Brock Lesnar. Cody Rhodes has to beat Brock Lesnar. I love Cody Rhodes. And then he's just going to emotions and everything down. Yeah, I know. And then we're going to have... Likely, uh, Io Shirai and Bianca at Backlash, or at least hopefully at Backlash. Yeah, Io Shirai. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I don't know yeah, how Nash yeah. feels about her, but I'm, you know, he's been talking about how he needs damage control to get some wins and to, you know, make them relevant. I think if Io can beat uh, Bianca, that'll be a huge relevancy yeah, for but her. Yeah, but it's, like, it's looking like they're about to split that up, though. Yeah. Yeah, because... Dakota and Io didn't look, look too happy when Bailey was talking about the number one contender spot. Io yeah, Shirai is one of the best women's wrestlers, I, just best wrestlers in wrestling. Honestly, for me, what I what I hope to, hope to see is if even if Io doesn't win, she puts on a good match. And yeah. I hope Dakota is the women's money in the bank winner this year. I would yeah. like to see that. I think that would be interesting. Yeah. Because I think they deserve so much Some credit. type of push, yeah. Yeah. They're really good wrestlers. And then we'll likely see Bad Bunny, Rey Mysterio versus Judgment Day, Dominic and uh, Damian Priest. I'm sure Nash would. Come out with the, Rey Mysterio needs to be this kid again. <laughs> I need to see it. Something like that. So I'm excited for that match, though. Uh, I'll talk about the Tampa Bay Rays, an impressive 10-0 start. Ninth team in MLB history to start 10-0. Still think they're kind of fraudulent. Yeah. 
Uh, they're it's very, favorite, very good team, but it's the Rays. I don't see them doing anything with this. But it's cool to see them winning and winning a lot, I guess. And it's, it's always cool. It's always days. cool to see those teams that just like yeah. break step. It's cool to see like yeah, history yeah. happen. Yeah, the ninth team to start ten and zero. It's a hundred sixty two game season. But 10-0 is very impressive. Winning 10 straight games in baseball is impressive. Yeah, that's because, very hard to do. Uh-huh. Baseball is a hard game. Very hard sport. I've been playing the new MLB game. Hard game. <laughs> baseball is just a hard sport to play. But it is it is cool to see, you know, teams breaking records. Yeah. Braves also off to a hot start. So, you know, go Braves. Very excited to see that. But baseball is starting to pique my interest a little more now. It's somewhat me, too. I'm not even the biggest baseball fan. It's becoming more interesting to me. The pitch clock, the games are more watchable. I can watch it and enjoy it because it's shorter. I'm not watching a four-hour game of nine innings. I'm watching, like, two hours of nine innings. It, You know, hardcore fans don't like it. Casual fans love it. Yeah. Because it just it feels like you can sit down and enjoy a game. Yeah. It feels like you're watching something else other than baseball. people standing around for 30 seconds before a pitch goes yeah, out. Pitch. Yeah. Now you got 15 seconds, you got to throw it. And I like that. I like yeah. that about baseball. And, and I, I think, think baseball is going to start getting a lot more viewership, especially over the summer. I think after, and sport. also the world, I don't even, I can't recall what it's called, but like the World Cup of Baseball just happened. So of course that. The World was, Baseball Classic? Yeah, that was, yeah, WBC was very yeah, fun yeah. to watch. I watched that last game. Very upsettingly, but I did watch it. It was cool to see, you know, Trout Otani, uh, that final, I guess, pit, not a pitching battle, but the final out of the game. Yeah. Baseball is starting to become more enjoyable with guys like Otani because he's the most exciting person in sports. He's doing stuff you don't see people do. It just yeah. sucks he's on the angel. Yeah, it yeah. sucks that his team is terrible, but he is such a fun player to watch because he's, you know, he'll get. 10, 11 Ks in a game, and then he'll go out and hit a bomb. And it's just like, you don't see that. I've seen a lot of people. I don't see Jacob deGrom and no one else is doing coming that. out and hitting bombs or Justin Verlander or any of these guys. But, you know, Shohei is just, he's young, and he's fun to watch. He's a fresh face in baseball. Uh, kind of like Aaron Judge. Aaron Judge is another guy who's really fun to watch because he can just hit it, and it's gone. These guys are so good for the game of baseball. You know, Tatis, when he gets back, good for the game. Uh, Vladdy, great for the game. I would argue the only great. time Aaron Judge is not fun to watch is when it's second overtime uh, and when Clemson's playing Wake Forest and it's down to the wire. And then ESPN not, decides to pop up that he had his home run. Yeah, that wasn't yeah. the most yeah, fun to not, watch. Not, not a fun time. No. Nobody wanted to see that. No. But, you know, still a great player. Yeah. Very impressive. Yeah. But these young guys in baseball are making it so enjoyable to see a new generation coming up. And you can tell these guys are good. Yeah. These are some of the best athletes I've seen in the sport of baseball in a long time. And it's just fun to watch. Yeah. So I think that's all we have. We'll see you next week. And thank you for watching.